What up guys? Are you on the market for a cheap but functional tripod? Then this Manbilly tripod might be the one for you. First off, just a small disclaimer. I was sent this tripod from Manbilly, but I have not agreed upon saying anything particular. This is all in all my own review, my own feelings and how I feel about the tripod. So this is uh, my honest opinion about the product. I already own a Manfrotto tripod and I will do this review in some sort of reference to this because this is what I know about but I will not do a one-to-one -one comparison. I will of course just try to focus on the man Billy tripod. Before we unbox the parcel I just quickly want to address why you as a street photographer or as a content creator would like to own a tripod. And make sure to watch the video to the end because a little later on I will show you some real world examples on how you can use the tripod in your everyday life as a street photographer or as a content creator. But first of all, street photography isn't just about snapping a photo. It's about crafting moments in the hustle and bustle of urban life. But let's get real about the challenges that you might face out there as a street photographer. Think about those dimly lit scenes or alleyways or those fleeting instances of action-packed street scenes. In these scenarios, every detail matters. And this is where a tripod might be a handy tool for you to use so imagine this, you are out in the city around dusk trying to capture the vibrant energy of your city. With the light fading fast, handheld shots do get more and more hard to capture. With the light fading fast, handheld shots get harder and harder to master. And that is where the tripod swoops in, providing rock solid stability for those longer exposures that you might need. And suddenly you are able to capture the rich hues of the city with unparalleled clarity and even without worrying about getting a blurry shot. Let's also talk about about composition. Composition can really take your photo a level up and with a tripod it is possible to be a little more specific when it comes to your composition because you can set it up and move it around until you have a composition that you really like. And talking about this, a tripod of course is not limited to the classic eye to eye photo. It is also possible to get really down low and up high, even higher than you might be able to with your hands. So this is also a tool to add depth and dimension to your shots. But of course yeah you can still do these photos handheld so let's not forget about the versatility as a content creator by having a tripod you just need a tripod to film yourself just like i am doing now and this is also the truth when it comes to street photography if you want to shoot yourself you can use the tripod for doing some really nice cinematic shots and also you can use a tripod for doing time lapses and hyper lapses that you won't be able to do going handheld so fellow creators if you are serious about mass Mastering your street photography or content creator game, you should not underestimate the power of a tripod. It is not just a tool, it is also your ticket to unlocking the next level of content creation for you. So just to mention again, I will show you some real life examples in a bit on how you can use uh, the tripod for yourself. But with that out of the way, let's get into unboxing this uh, parcel that I received from Manbilly. So first of all, I like this minimalistic packaging where you also get a little, little carrying bag for the tripod. And I really like the small form factor, which is way smaller than my Manfrotto tripod. And what else do we get here? You get a holder for a phone. You get a handle to control the tilt and pan for the tripod head. And you get this little bag with spare tripod mount some different uh, feet for the tripod so you can put it in the softer ground like a lawn or so and you get this uh, manual let's just quickly look at the back here and the tripod i like the feel of it it feels robust but without being too heavy and if you wonder it weighs around 1.7 kilograms, which is also what the manufacturer says. And I think this is a pretty decent. And if you want to see the size in reference to me, just to get an idea of the small factor, then you can see it here, yeah. Whoa, look at this manual, it's huge. I really like it, it kind of reminds me of a treasure map or something from an Indiana Jones movie. This is my goal here. <laughs> We're gonna find out where we're gonna do with these instructions, yeah? Let's check out the map, Moy. 
Right, lads. This is the one. Now, let's look at some of the key features here. The tripod comes with these uh, twist lock handles, which makes it fast and easy to adjust the length of the legs and also the extension arm here for the tripod head. The ball head is a decent ball head, I think. It is not a fluid ball head, which would be nice, but again, this is not really a video tripod. But for photography and still shots, this is uh, more than enough and really nice. And I also like the traction here of the rotation. I think this has a really good amount of resistance for you to rotate the head to get some moving shots that have a really uh, nice flow to it. And if you want the tripod to angle out the legs, then this is a really fast function they have built in here, where you simply like move this part here and then you can adjust the leg and you clamp it in again and then you have the leg in the position that you want. Speaking of going low, I think the tripod can go really low when you yeah, take out the legs in the, the fullest angle and also it is possible to turn around the extension arm so you can mount your camera to the other side and go really low to the ground which is really nice. This is something that my Manfrotto cannot do. And because it is possible to take out the extension arm, this tripod actually also works as a monopod. Which is really nice because this is just another tool for your back that you can use in your content creation game. But what should you use the tripod for? Apart from filming yourself, of course, a tripod is really good at capturing time lapses and motion blur. And uh, I have an example here on how I used the tripod. And this is like doing this really cool Instagram carousel. So what I did here was I, of course, set up the tripod here on a train station and I had my subject, which was my son in this instance, but it could also just have been myself. And did it size the move? Then I set the camera to manual mode okay. and I set the shutter speed around 1 15th or 1 30th of a second, somewhere in between this. And of course I adjusted the exposure so the image was uh, nice and then we waited for a train to go by. And uh, I told my little model here to uh, stand uh, still and look really cool. So when the train arrived at the station, I just did a burst and took a lot of photos. So I pick 10 photos uh, here in a sequence. I color grade them and I do a 4x5 ratio for them to fit for Instagram. Then we export them for Instagram and we upload them as a carousel. And yeah, when you tap and hold these uh, dots here, you can swipe to the sides and it will uh, make this uh, really cool time-lapse carousel. So another way is to use the monopod and you can actually get some really nice walking shots with a monopod that uh, you might not think is uh, possible. You can use the monopod to get some really nice angles as well and do some uh, interesting video shots that you will not be able to do just with a uh, normal camera and your hands. And so here I am out and filming with my family and I'm using my Sony a7 III with the 20mm 1.8 and I am uh, wearing Dr. Martin's shoes which is not the best because it's a hard shoe so it introduces these like yeah, more bumps to, to the video and if you own the Sony a7 III you know that the stabilization in body here is not the best so it is not the most optimal video setup that I have here, but still, if you like extend the monopod to its fullest and you hold it in your hands and you put it up high, you can get this uh, drone-like kind of shot. And yeah, you will try to do the ninja walk and, and walk straight ahead and hold your arms into your body and still, uh, and then you are, and if you yeah, tilt the camera a bit down, you get this uh, yeah, drone-like footage, which I think is really cool. And yeah, my son even said that, uh, Dad, this looks like a drone shot, even though it's not a drone shot. So I guess there might be something to this. And yeah, you can get all these different kinds of uh, follow shot as well with the uh, monopod, where you like hold it close to your body and you have one hand in front of you and you use the other hand of the small tilting arm to get like a three point of contact. And then you can walk more stable. If you do this close to your body, you will get like, yeah, more like a body shot, of course, like 
way it's possible to see more of the scene. But you can also put it on your shoulders and then walk straight ahead and you will get more like of a face follow shot, at least if your model is an adult. And yeah, you can turn the monopod around and then you will have a close to the ground walking shot as well. These can look uh, pretty cool as well. You can also get these kind of uh, slider shots if you like use your body to go from left to right and yeah, you can hold the monopod into your body. And also if you like just lengthen out the monopod and put it close to your body and hold it out from your body in an angle, you can get this other version of a top down or ankle shot from, from the top that is also pretty interesting, I think. Then you can also do this kind of crane jib down movement which is uh, really nice. And it is also possible to do this kind of uh, hero shot here where you like move towards the subject and also tilt up, which looks uh, pretty dope, I think. And yeah, this is really a hero shot because you can see we have a Spider-Man sitting here. So I hope you see the diversity actually from having a monopod and using it for a filming. Like people get really caught up about gimbals, but you can actually do quite a lot with just a monopod. So we come to the end of this uh, review of the Man Billy tripod. I actually don't have much bad to say about the tripod. I really think it's a sturdy and robust tripod and it offers some uh, really useful and easy locking mechanisms that just makes it uh, nice to use. And it falls into this really compact size which is really nice if you are going to carry it around. So if I have to complain about anything I would wish that the handle for controlling the tilt and rotation was a bit longer just because yeah it's really small. And of course it would have been nice with a fluid ball head as well and perhaps a feed for the monopod so you can uh, put it on the ground and it won't uh, fall. And even though I like this uh, fast way of adjusting the angle of the legs, I do feel that it's a bit unsafe and I'm afraid that I will miss like locking the, the button in and it will fall when I put it on the ground. So that is of course something that I need to look out for when I am using the tripod. But all in all, I think this is a really great tripod and I would definitely recommend it. And I am definitely also going to use it myself here in the future for shooting myself and doing time lapses and going out and doing street photography. Anyway, guys, this is all for now. I hope you liked this review of the Man Billy tripod and that it helped you decide if you should buy this tripod or another tripod or if you should buy a tripod at all. Remember, if you like this video, please make sure to Give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot more than you imagine. And yeah, I appreciate any support that I can get from making these videos. And it also gives me a clue if you like these kind of review videos, which I'm not doing that much, but perhaps I should do. So I will see you around guys. Take care. Boy.